Classifying triangles. When we classify triangles, there's two ways we do it. And all triangles both have these two ways. We can classify them by sides, and we can classify triangles by angles. First, let's talk about sides. When we talk about sides, we talk about scalene, isosceles, and equilateral. With a scalene triangle, we have no congruent signs. That means all three sides have different angle, or excuse me, different side lengths. Remember the tick marks tell us which sides are congruent. So since all three of these sides have different measurements, they do not have the same amount of tick marks. With an isosceles triangle, we have two sides that are congruent. They do not have to be the two sides that appear directly across from each other like we have in this picture. The picture could definitely be rotated and our isosceles triangle could be on its side like that. So that could also be an isosceles triangle. Lastly, we have the equilateral triangle. The equilateral triangle, we have three sides all congruent. So all three sides of our triangle are congruent. Next, we can classify triangles by angles. When we classify them by angles, we must look at all three angles. When we're talking about an acute triangle, we look at all three angles. We have the three interior angles of our triangle, and we need to make sure that all three of those angles are acute. With an obtuse triangle, we need one angle of the triangle to measure more than 90 degrees. We cannot have it possible for more than one angle to be obtuse. We just need one. Remember, obtuse means more than 90 and less than 180. With a right triangle, we need one angle that is a right angle. That one you're probably most common with or most familiar with because we've seen that one a lot. Last is the equal angular. Equal angular triangles have three equal angles. All three angles are the same. And as it turns out, all three of those angles with an equal angular will always be 60 degrees. Never more, never less. Let's try and use some of the properties that we just learned about triangles to solve a question. The question is, find D and the measure of each side of an equilateral triangle. Okay, first off, we need to remember what is an equilateral triangle. These properties are going to help us solve these types of problems. An equilateral triangle is a triangle in which all three sides are equal. We have a triangle here. We'll draw it like an equilateral. We'll put d plus 2, 12 minus d, and 4d minus 13. Now, as I just reviewed for you there, all three angles, or excuse me, all three sides are going to be the same measurement. But we can't solve a problem in which we set three things equal to each other. So I'm going to pick just two, and it can be any two. I will take these two sides. I will put d plus 2 equal to 12 minus d. Now solve this equation for d. And we get d equals The algebra there wasn't too challenging once you knew what to do. The key to knowing what to do in this question is to figure out what it's asking or what kind of shape we're dealing with. We're dealing with an equilateral triangle, which means all three sides are equal. Now I'm going to go back to my original picture here. I'll erase a few parts of it. If you remember, I had the measurement of D plus 2 on this side of the triangle. We now know that D is 5. That means 
the length of that side of the triangle would be 5 plus 2, which would be 7. The bottom side, when we started the problem, was our 12 minus D side. D is still 5, so we have 12 minus 5, which again is 7. Our last side of our triangle was 4D minus 13. 4 times 5 is 20. 20 minus 13 is 7. We've now found the measurements of all three sides and the measurement of D. And since it was an equilateral triangle, we can easily check this to make sure that it's matching. And that is true. 7, 7, 7 for side lengths would be an equilateral triangle. Here's another example. It says find the measures of each of the sides of triangle RST, then classify the triangle by its sides. First thing we need to do is graph it. We have the points R, which is at negative 1, negative 3. We have point S, which is at 4. five, and we have point T which is at 8, 2. We have our three points. They are not collinear points, which means we can make a triangle out of them. If I connect R to S, S to T, and T back to R, we have a triangle. Our next question is to find the measure of each of the sides of triangle RST. Well, what we need to do there actually is use the distance formula. If you remember the distance formula from an earlier lesson we've had, or if you forget it, you can look in the back of the book. What we need to do is first calculate R, S, and that distance. What we do is we take the x coordinates, subtract them, add that to the y coordinates subtracted, and find that value. For what we're doing, we really do not need the decimal or the exact value because the decimal value actually is not really exact. We're going to be better off just leaving this with the square root value. So I'm going to leave it as a square root of 89. I'll put that on my picture and I'll move on to another pair of sides. Next I'll do S and T. We do it the exact same way except for now we use S and T's coordinates. We have 5 minus negative 2 squared plus 8 minus 4 squared. This gives us 7 squared plus 4 squared, which gives us 49 plus 16, which is 65. We now know that TST is 65. Our last pair of sides would be R to T. We do the exact same thing one more time. We take the 8 minus negative 1 squared plus negative 2 minus negative 3 squared. We will have 9 squared plus 1 squared, which would be the square root of 82. We now know that RT is the square root of 82. We can now classify the triangle by the sides. The three sides have three different measurements. That means we have a scalene triangle. Hopefully you were able to remember how to do the distance formula, but if you don't, make sure to ask me and I'll help you out when you get to class. If you have any questions, make sure that you've noted them in your notes so that you can ask when you come back to class. Have a great day.